So I've always wanted to charge my e-bike with freshly made, clean, fully renewable solar power. And today we get to test the practicality of doing this. I picked up the Opus 600 portable power station with a 100 watt folding solar panel. These devices in general are becoming very popular. I see them all the time. The main use cases here are as a power backup uh, for travel and even extreme off-grid living situations. On this unit in particular, we have two standard AC outlets using a 600 watt pure sine inverter with a surge of 1000 watts. We have one USB-C power delivery output, two full-size USB-A ports, a standard car 12 volt plug, and a display in the middle that shows you the charge and output watts. All right, we're gonna begin with the iPad Pro, the big one. We're gonna use the USB type C power delivery. Turn it on and it should charge. Okay, that was a raging success. And the cool thing is you can see exactly how many watts you're charging at. So plugging in a second USB port. These are Bluetooth earbuds. Plug it in, it's charging. And this should jump from 13 to, I guess, 14? The energy capacity of this model is 595 watt hours with a charging speed or an input wattage of 100. So theoretically, this will take six hours to fully charge. Probably closer to seven though, considering inefficiencies. Now this is the actual charger, the wall charger. And if we plug it in, you should see the input wattage. Yes, yeah, so we have a nice animation indicating that it is indeed charging. The fan is on. It's very quiet. And this is changed to input watts and it's at 94. And I'm a big fan of the actual battery implemented here. It's using the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry instead of the more common lithium ion batteries. Even though they sound very similar, there's two major differences. The first one is the life cycle. Lithium iron phosphate batteries last significantly longer. This is rated for 3,500 cycles. And with a device like this, you certainly want it to last a long time. So I like to see that. The other benefit of this battery chemistry is the inherent safety. When compared to lithium ion batteries, which have the ability to catch fire and explode in extreme situations, that is significantly less likely with this type of battery. All right, now my goal here in this video is to see if I can use this battery in conjunction with these solar panels to charge my electric bike. So first things first, let's see if it is indeed compatible. So put on the battery. For reference, this is a 48 volt battery, 20 amp hours of capacity, review coming soon. So let's plug in the, the AC, turn on the AC, inverter. This light should go red if it's charging. So let's plug it in and red. So on the screen we can see it's pulling 174 watts. So at this speed, 960 divided by 1, let's just say 170, this bike takes 5.6 hours to fully charge and this battery can supply the charge for three and a half hours. So we're going to go ahead and deploy the 100 watt solar panel and we're going to see if together while it's generating solar power if that's enough to fully charge this bike. All right so we have these solar panels in the sun and plugged into the battery pack and in these conditions it's pulling in 50 around 50 watts right now 57. So as we saw before the bike pulls 170-ish watts and we're generating 50. So that means net we're only losing 120 watts. So 595 divided by the new withdrawal rate of 120 means that this configuration can charge the bike for five hours. And that's just shy of the 5.6 hours it takes to fully charge this bike. So as long as it's not fully dead, you should be fine. So right now this bike has about an 80% charge. So we're gonna go ahead Use the sun, top it up to 100, and see how it does. So this number is gonna go from the input wattage of around 50 to now the output wattage of that 174. One hour later. And just like that, courtesy of the sun, we have a full charge on the electric bike, fully sustainable power solution here. We did begin to lose solar towards the end and we have 
19% battery left. You can see right now we're actually pulling in only two watts because it's past 5 p.m. and we have some shade on the panels. But I think this was a raging success. We showed that it can indeed be done. Oh yeah, and this comes with a, a splitter. So if you want, you can easily hook up 200 watts of solar to the battery. And then it folds up like so. But I gotta say overall, I'm a big fan of these uh, solar generators. They make sense in a ton of situations, especially if you live off grid and you need a solution to generate your own power. But aside from that, just as a, a battery backup for those days that you lose power, these batteries along with the solar panels give you a, a means to generate your own power, which is very comforting. And like we saw, we can even use it to charge something big like an electric bike. Combined with the input power from the, the solar, it can certainly keep up. But I think the way that I personally am going to use this battery the most is as an uninterruptible power supply on my desk for all of my devices. So I currently have one of those USB hubs that charges everything, but there's no battery built into that. So if power goes out, it no longer works. But this with the three built-in USB power ports can serve that role and it has that massive built-in battery. So I'll go ahead and leave this battery link down below if you guys wanna go check it out. On their official website, as well as on Amazon, they have multiple capacities to choose from. This is just one of them. So if this one in particular is too big or too small for you, there should be an option that matches your needs. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.